right. I was transmuting energy. Spiritual transmutation, right? This is a process that we all actually undergo. The only difference is, we gonna move this tape because I don't need it. The only difference is in the octave that it's being expressed. So the lower octave of expression would be considered impulse, reacting to things out of urge. You see something you want, boom, you go after it. You hear something you want, boom, you go after that. It's impulse, it's urges. When somebody's more developed, more evolved, and more patient, then they're able to express transmutation. And that's the process of seeing something you want, hearing something you want, feeling something you want, whatever it be, right? But you're able to hold on to those emotions, aka you repress your emotions and feelings, and you store it, and it's almost like you develop it. Now, this is very much connected to the high priestess. May I also add that I actually made up a term for this a year ago um, when I was developing a language. So anyways, the language was called um, Hushanig. I don't know, <laughs> AKA that hush hush. Like, I don't know how I came up with it, but anyways, um, the saying was Karash Tishkala. And I'm about to tell you what the definition of it is. And it's basically the same thing as the transmutation process. All right, so let me look for it. Karash tishkala, store away until growth. So karash equals return, tish equals something, kala out of nothing, the soul. So there's a significance in withholding patience and maintaining prudence in order to navigate towards what holds longevity versus what is fulfilling for the moment. Um... And basically, this is the transmutation process. And this was back in July of 2018 when I made this, just for reference purposes. But anyways, um, it's connected to high priestess too. It's basically the ability to know, um, but you just know that it's not the divine timing for it yet. So you're able to really hold on to that energy and manipulate it um, in such a way that when the divine timing does come about you can then like release that energy now here's the thing this energy is passionate your impulse reactions is a passionate energy in psychology when you first get into like the first couple chapters of psychology the first psychologist you learn about is sigmund freud and he teaches about that psycho psychoanalysis don't judge me I did study psychology in college, but, um, you know, I'm not good with terms and stuff, but you know what? Um, I'm pretty sure it is a cycle analysis. Um, and there's like these psychosexual stages. And I remember learning like sex and impulse is like the same shit. And I think this is also connected to, to the id. So the id energy. And this is our energy you know, derived from when we're very, very young, we're first coming into this world, we cry and our parents immediately respond to us crying and try to give us what we want, right? But then there comes a point in time where we have to detach from that energy and we have to then learn to wait because our parents that say, okay, you're getting a little bit too old now and you need to learn how to, you know, wait to be more patient, right? After a while, what happens? You can't pee and poop in a flipping diaper anymore. You have to learn how to hold it in, right? You get potty trained and you have to learn how to hold it in and you use the bathroom like the adults do until you get real old again and you turn into a kid again because you start wearing Depends. But that's besides the point. The point is this is a transmutation process. I'm just giving another example of um, how transmutation works. So if we know it's dealing with the energy of fire, right? AKA our impulse, our sexual drive, right? Then what happens is the, again, the traditional human being, they react off of this. Um, and we all do this, by the way, like through eating. Like most people, when we're, when we're hungry, we eat. And usually that is the best method for like metabolic purposes. Um, Metabolic or metabolism purposes? I think met metabolic. Don't judge. So, correcting myself. 
Anyway, um, my point being is that this is an impulse. We have an urge, we have a hunger, we go and get food. We get a little bit of a quench, we go get some water, whatever that you drink. I drink water. So with that being said, the next octave, I guess you could say, of the expression would be intimacy. So most people hold in their passions in order to be intimate in this life as well. Um, and this is the reason why intimacy is, you know, connected to the energy of passion. It's just a feminine passionate expression because it's being held in. So... With that being said, the next octave, I guess you could say, of the expression would be intimacy. So most people hold in their passions in order to be intimate in this life as well. We'll get into that tantric intimacy and whatnot. Um, and this is going to be more, I want to say deep. I want to say it's like a higher octave of intimacy in general. So anyways... My point being is that most people just express the nature of transmutation on a lower octave and this is expressed in just our impulse reactions on a day-to-day -day basis as well as being intimate with another person or being intimate with yourself, which we all know what that is, right? So my next point is that the higher octave of this expression would be that process of transmutation in which you can now be at your more heightened state of creativity. Um, and really what it is, is a lot of the times it's connected to things like people that may be very insecure within this expression or because they've had maybe some bad experiences like or embarrassing situations as it relates to this. Um, any form of insecurity in the expression of our wants and needs our desires our appetites like people that are just very insecure within that energy they have the ability to transmute it because that energy becomes frozen right it becomes frozen it becomes it becomes mute it becomes mute and what happens is because it becomes mute um when you actually deal with the situation, when you heal from it, you sort of become more comfortable with the fact that you may not be the most comfortable with it and it may be kind of awkward in its expression or you just may not be able to relax or something or you may get too like too heightened up from it or whatever. Um, then you're going to be able to heal that energy in such a way to transmute it into some sort of creative endeavor. So the other way that transmutation works besides like putting it within creative endeavors would be through healing oneself. Now this might sound crazy and I know, you know, this is, I didn't want to do this, but I'm gonna do it because this is about the topic. So doctors don't get mad, nurses don't get mad, medical field um, workers don't get mad. This is just, something that people used to do back in the day so you do have the ability to heal yourself right through the transmutation process the issue being that we're not taught this energy okay and this would disrupt a lot of businesses so the thing is that you can heal your body but you have to activate like kundalini basically which kundalini i don't even want to get into that really right now in this video in particular but maybe in the future i certainly will but my point being is that you're able to actually control the vibes in your body or the energy the chi in your body and you can help to restabilize any sort of imbalances through the transmutation process because when you're holding on to energy when energy is repressed within your body in some way then you can address that situation on a mental basis and actually do like a mental transmutation process um that's the other way that transmutation works so 
what may seem weird about this is like, okay, what well, what should be you can mentally transmute? All right, so let's let's kind of go over the elements again, right? You have fire, earth, air, and you have water. Um, and then you have like spirit, basically. But here's the thing. Here's like the basic gist. When you're dealing with fire, you're dealing with your sense of sight for the most part. You're dealing with what you can see. And then when you're dealing with the element of earth, you're dealing with your sense of touch. Anything that you can actually like grab that's um, 3D. When you're dealing with the air element, you're dealing mostly with the sense of hearing. So your audit, what is it? Your auditory sense. Um, and this is connected directly to your throat. This is the reason why air is connected to commun communication as well. You ever like get real sick or something like a cough and you get an ear infection? See, because they're connected. Um, and then you have your sense of um you have like your water element which is going to be connected to the feelings like the emotions and feelings this is more connected to the sixth sense and the spiritual energy there's just different octaves there's your own feeling like that would be more so just like regular water but once you start to tap into the broad dynamic of feeling so now you could be sitting next to someone and they may be laughing but you feel that they're really upset um, despite them portraying that through the fire element, through what you can see and the air element, which you can hear. <laughs> they're laughing. You know what I'm saying? But you could feel intuitively that that's bullshit. Then you're dealing more so with the spiritual um, or the ethereal element. So I hope that made sense. The reason why I mentioned this is because this is part of the transmutation process. You can start to feel energy and know kind of what to do based upon how you feel. And then this starts to transmute the energy. So that's the best way that I can explain it. And this is a part of quantum manifestation um, is the ability to sort of take on the right senses the right vibrations for a particular period of time i'm making sense i'm making sense i ain't losing nobody i hope not um but yeah that's the basics of the um transmutation process it's just the ability to store the energy of passion and restore into a higher vibrational expression. That's it. That's it. So for example, in my music, I use a transmutation process. In my communication, I use a transmutation process, which is the reason why a lot of times my videos could come off a little bit weird. Like, what, what, is, she, what is she doing? You know, I'd be coming off suspicious. I don't know why I look like that. You know why I look like that? Because I'm transmuting energy because you could feel like I want to say something else. You feel like I want to curse somebody out, but I'm not, right? If I was doing opera, ain't nobody would have thought that, but because I'm flipping black and I'm slurring, ah, uh, she popped a Zanish, I can't speak. Fuck everybody, yo. And I mean that, and I love you. Peace, love, light, blessings. Because I'm working on a higher vibration, I'm transmuting, so it creates the element of steam. It's like boiling water, basically. But it's it's just, it's different. So then I'm able to quickly shift my energy. Um, and this is why a lot of people will be like, what's going on? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's all it is. It's just transmutation. That's all it is. Okay. So I hope this video was interesting and I hope everybody was able to understand it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, or don't. Blessings, light, and love.